why do we say the things we say? and Why do we believe the things that we share with the rest of the world? What's our driving force for what comes out of our mouth? And the reason I'm asking the question is as an exercise professional and somebody who is involved with other people's opinions about exercise and food, uh, it's an interesting experience for me every day to ask people why. Why did you say that? Why do you believe that? Uh, do you know that that's true? And that those kind of questions can be very confrontational and very, uh, they're tough questions to ask. And when you see the look on people's faces when they try to answer the question, that's when it becomes very uncomfortable. So it's not something that I do on a regular basis. Uh, I bring my teddy bear with me when this is a confrontational experience. And whew, I'm asking the question because uh, if we were talking about choosing some fashion item or um, uh, picking a meal you know, every so often or the colour of the paint on a wall, uh, they're the kind of things that probably don't matter too much if you have an opinion that's different from somebody else's. But if you are giving advice about food, about exercise, about helping people to be healthy, about self-esteem, self-confidence, long-term uh, quality of life, I always ask this question, do we have the responsibility as exercise professionals to know our stuff, not repeat other people's opinions? And it's as an educator and when I, I use that term very carefully because I'm learning every day. I'm educating, self-educating, self-learning, uh, aiming to get as much information as possible every single day about how the human body works, how the brain works, how the endocrine central, central nervous system works, how exercise affects everything that we do because that's what I am. I'm an exercise professional, so I'm constantly learning. And all I've learned uh, since I've been learning every day is that I don't know very much. I'm just constantly trying to get more information to try and understand how the human body works. So when I ask questions of people who are calling themselves exercise professionals or they're delivering information about food, nutrition, exercise, well-being... And I ask them, why did you say that and how does it work? Or why did you give that information and how does that actually work? And I ask some of the fundamental questions about the human body and the person can't answer those questions, but they're giving information to the world as if they are experts in that area. And I get that this is a very confrontational uh, topic to talk about. Again, I've got the teddy bear with me. But I'm asking, in fact, I'm probably begging now, because I've been the person who didn't know my stuff. I, I was the person who pretended to know my anatomy and physiology. I was the person who was delivering regurgitated information to members at my health club, to my clients, to people who came to my classes. And when I look back over that, I'm really embarrassed about the, the lack of knowledge and understanding of, of what I was delivering. And again, if, if I was delivering information about paint colour or fashion or fingernail polish, it probably wouldn't matter. But we're talking about people's lives. And it, it, even if I go a step further, it's the quality of their life. We are, as exercise professionals, responsible for, I believe, not just keeping people healthy, fit and strong for the rest of their lives, but having a great relationship with that healthy, fit, strong body. So there are, or is it possible that there are a lot of people who uh, they're in great shape or they've got ripped abdominals or they, they're really fit and they can run a long way, but they aren't very happy or they've got a, an uncomfortable, un, un unsafe relationship, unhealthy relationship with their food or their exercise, where their food or exercise is controlling their life. Uh, there's a lot of don't eat that, can't have that, mustn't have that. And my question is always, what does that do to somebody's headspace? If you say can't have, mustn't have, don't have, and it happens to be the person's favorite food, what happens if they never eat it again? They get angry and, and bitter and twisted because that's something they love to eat and you've told them they can't have it. The reverse of that, you say can't have, mustn't have, don't have, they have it anyway, but now they have a really unhealthy relationship with that food. They eat it anyway, but now they feel guilty or angry with themselves 
because I think they shouldn't have eaten that. If I go a step further, now it comes uh, our, our kids. What about our, our children that are growing up in a world where dieting and uh, fanatical exercise and dangerous exercises, and I use the word dangerous for a reason, because if I bust or break somebody's joints and they can't exercise anymore or they don't ever try again because their exercise either wasted their time or hurt them or or they didn't get the results that they wanted and they never exercise again, what have I done to their quality of life? Uh, the human body is capable of living as a healthy, fit, strong, high-performance machine for a very long time. And I share that really passionately. Can you imagine what it's like for me as an exercise professional who, lo who loves being healthy, fit, and strong, believes that you can be healthy, fit, and strong for a long time, and then I go and meet people who are over 100 years of age, and they're literally living with great quality of life. They're still working. They're still running their business. They're spending time with their family and loving it. They're making love to their partner. They're playing their sport. They're, they, they're living as 50-year-olds, and they're over 100 years of age. Can you imagine how exciting that is to know that our products, our service, the thing that we do as exercise professionals, it actually works one of the most powerful products in the world. If you could put it into a pill and sell it, it would be the most highest, highest bought product in the world, don't you think? Self-esteem, self-confidence, great hair, great skin, great nails, uh, a body that burns food and calories and alcohol really fast, a brain that pumps happy drugs so you feel happy and satisfied and rewarded all of the time because your body's healthy, fit and strong, being able to go and do all the things that you want to do. Uh, that's what we do as exercise professionals. And being able to do that for somebody, but doing it with such poor quality that we hurt their joint or we, we injure them or they, they can't keep doing it for the rest of their life. I'm just, I really am. I'm at the point now where I'm begging, please, if you are an exercise professional, if you're a coach, if you're somebody involved in the delivery of exercise and or food, please, can we stop just repeating other people's opinions a million people with the same opinion doesn't mean that it's right. It just means that there's people following each other. We seem to live in a world where if somebody starts the trend, then everybody follows. Well, how about we start the trend of let's learn how the human body works and actually understand the information that we're giving people so that they get it. And I always ask this question of my all of my max exercise professionals and business people. Why do we make it so complicated? Is it possible that, and I'll use business to start with, to be successful in business, it's this simple. Find a problem, find a solution, create a wow experience. If there's a problem and you can solve the problem and people love doing business with you because they love the way that you solve the problem, will you have a successful business? And of course the answer is yes. And I just don't understand why we make it more complicated than that. But what about exercise and food? It's Both of those are so complicated and people have made them so difficult to understand. In fact, a lot of people have done this. They put their hands up in the air and said, it's too hard. One person says, eat this, and another person says, if you eat that, you'll die. One person says, you should exercise this way. Another person says, if you exercise that way, uh, it's going to hurt you. Well, how about this? What if we find the things that we can agree on and shouldn't that be anatomy and physiology? How does the human body work? It's pretty simple. If we were mechanics for cars, we wouldn't argue that there's four wheels and there's a steering wheel and there's an engine and the, and the car needs uh, either electricity now or it needs uh, fuel and it needs oil and it needs water and it needs to be maintained and you've got to put air in the tires. Nobody's going to argue about that in the, in the mechanic world. They're the things that you have to do to maintain your car so that it lasts a long time. And yet with the human body, we have such simple fundamentals and we've made it so complicated. If I get fit and if I get strong, will my life be different? What will I be able to do as a human being if every single system in my body is working effectively and I'm really strong, mentally and physically tough and strong? What will, how will my life be? And yet if I ask people, and I did today, I asked an exercise professional, how do you get fit and how do you get strong? And I got this very, very long, complicated, big word answer. And what if it was this simple? If you want to get fit, you've got to get puffed. And if you want to get strong, you've got to overload your muscles. If you add to that that you need to do it safely so you don't hurt yourself. So how do I get fit without hurting myself? How do I get strong without hurting myself? And will my life be better if I'm fit and strong? Now, to get fit, I've got to get puffed. 
to get strong, I've got to overload my muscles. If you look at the, the anatomy and physiology of the human body, everything works together. For some reason, the exercise industry has broken the body up into a thousand different pieces, but we never move our body in a thousand different pieces. It always works together. Whether we're lying down or standing up, every part of our body is being used at the same time because the central nervous system drives everything. The endocrine system makes things happen. The cardiovascular and respiratory system makes sure that we're breathing and that things are circulating. And our framework, our skeletal system and muscular system are holding us in the upright position or whatever position we're in. Everything works together. And yet we seem to have taken this high-performing, simple-to-understand machine and turned it into something really complicated. Now, I'm not suggesting that I understand how the human body works from the inside. I've never been in there. But what I do and am really passionate about is that if you get fit, get puffed. If you get strong, overload your muscles. What happens to your body? And could we keep it that simple? Why have we made it so complicated? And why don't we know our stuff? If you don't know how to get fit physiologically, psychologically, uh, how, how the systems work together to get fit, should you know that? It's like asking a mechanic, where does the petrol go and where does the water go and how do they all work together inside the engine to make sure that the engine can go? And if, a if as a mechanic you don't know that, I think that you wouldn't be able to call yourself a very good mechanic. If you're a builder and you don't know that you, you need to put the foundations down first before you put the roof and you don't uh, understand that you might need some, uh, some electricity and some plumbing in that house to make it a place that's effective to live, then you probably wouldn't be considered a very good builder. And yet as exercise professionals and or exercise people, because you couldn't call us professionals, and we're pretty embarrassing as a group, and I have to accept that because I used to be too, we don't know our stuff. And I'll ask again, if somebody asks you the question about the exercises that you're delivering, why are you doing that and how does it work? And you don't know the answer, not just know the answer, but you understand it, you can explain it simply. Should we go back and learn it? I think we either didn't learn it in the first place or we forgot it, and I was a bit of both. I learnt some stuff and then I forgot it, and then other stuff I just didn't learn at all. It was like, oh, I know that already. And there's a great quote, the biggest barrier to learning is already knowing. I deal with that every day as uh, the, uh, I, I want to educate myself every day. But people come to the, the Max Colleges, they don't get accepted into the college, by the way, but they come to the college and they say, look, I just want to get a bit of paper. I know everything already. I just need a bit of paper to prove that I'm qualified. And when, when somebody says, I know that already, what happens to your ability to learn more? If I say, I know that, I rephrase that all the time. What more do I need to know about that? Not, I know that already. What more do I need to know? Is there a simple, more simple way to explain it? Is there a better way to be able to share it with the world? Uh, what more do I need to know? And if you have a look at something like the central nervous system or the endocrine system or the muscular system or the skeletal system, it's so involved. There's people that study just cells. There's people that study just joints. There's people that study just the muscular system. And yet as exercise professionals, we have the audacity, there's a big word, to say, I know that already. So what I'm asking is, please, can you learn? That's my phone telling me that somebody wants to say hello. And I, what I really hope is that somebody that, and I'm hoping, because I don't know, I just hope that as exercise professionals, the reason that, uh, and I'll use personal coaching at Max, your coaches, k Man Savvy and I, are available every single day to learn together. We've made some stupid mistakes and you can learn from our mistakes. We've had some great success and you can learn from our success. But ultimately, the, the process of, of becoming a top-level exercise professional, having a business, having clients, being able to help people to be healthy, fit and strong, these are three people who are absolutely committed to helping you every single day of, of the year. I'm here available every day because this is what I do. This is what I love to do. I don't want to have time off as people call it but if you don't ask the questions if you don't know how to explain something simply to your client if you don't know how the human body works 
Are you at risk of hurting somebody? And would would you be considered irresponsible if you don't know? If you're an exercise professional and you don't know how exercise affects the human body and you can't explain it simply, could that be embarrassing? Could that be irresponsible? So what I'm asking, please, is please take full advantage of your MAX program. Uh, it's available every day. Personal coaching is available every day. Support and, and a cheer squad. I'm here to yell and cheer for your success. But how could you call yourself a success if you if you call yourself an exercise professional, but you don't understand how the human body works? And I'm asking questions every day. I'm learning every day. And that's why I want to invest time with you every day if that's what you want. You have a team of people who are absolutely committed to your success as an exercise professional. Please take full advantage of that. May your career path as a, not just a top level exercise professional, but a person who is excited about helping other people to be healthy, fit and strong, may that be something that you can put into your life uh, and be proud of it, to, or proud to call yourself an exercise professional because you know what you're doing, you understand how the human body works and most important, the true definition of a professional is that we're learning every day. Whatever we think we know, we can get better. And I always use that beautiful expression, even the best know they can get better. So even if you think you're the best at anatomy and physiology, even if you think you're the best exercise professional, even if you think you're the best boot camp instructor, please can we get better? That's what professionals do.